story from here at Ice Hale. Teacher, talking to a senior girl's mother. I've noticed that your daughter, in addition to having great grades, has really good interpersonal skills and organizational skills and emotional maturity. And I really think that someday your daughter is going to be a great mother. PA, teacher, uh, CEO. Moral of the story, your parents, because they love you, may not always be the ones to encourage you to take the biggest risk. And your parents, your mother, just because she's your mother and also a woman, doesn't mean she might also not also be guilty of sexism. But mostly, just because you are a good girl, talented, ambitious, high achieving, gets good grades, doesn't mean that everybody recognizes your presence. Doesn't mean that those traits are enough. So, full disclosure, I used to be a good girl at ISKL. Oh, I was a very, very good girl. And now I work in contemporary dance, and part of the job that I do is working with young creative artists, trying to help them become contemporary dance choreographers. And in doing this job, I found a bit of a problem, and the problem is this. There are not a lot of women in positions of authority in dance. For example, artistic director, choreographer, or the person with the money and the authority in order to commission someone, a choreographer, to make dance. In ballet especially, which is the region of dance that has the most money and is the most institutionalized, there's a particular lack of women in positions of authority, which is particularly ironic because, of course, most of the dancers in ballet are women. So, for example, in the UK, it's been 14 years since a woman was commissioned to choreograph a main stage work for the Royal Opera House. In the USA, in the 2012-2013 season, there were 290 works, full-length works, choreographed that had a budget over $5 million. Of these 290, 25 of them were choreographed by women. And that's about 8%. But that's actually quite a good number when you compare that to the wider world beyond dance. Some of you may be familiar with these statistics. I'm just going to share with them with you again because I think they're so horrifying that you have to listen to them again. This year, for example, in the US, Fortune 500 companies reached a record high of having women in CEO positions. Fantastic! What was this record high? 4.8%. You might think, oh, this might be a problem with the US. Well, okay, let's look at another group of countries renowned for being liberal, very developed, Scandinavia. In Scandinavia, among the largest companies in Scandinavia, women hold these leadership positions in only 3%. According to the American Association of University Women, in 2013, among full-time paid work, women were paid, on average, 78% of what men were paid. So what do we do? No matter how talented you are, no matter how obliging, no matter how hardworking, no matter how high your achievements, if you are a good girl, you are still going to end up being paid 78 cents to the dollar of the guy being paid to the guy sitting next to you. Why is this? Partly it may have to do with education. Of course, it has to do with many other structural issues too, but there is always a root in education. But interestingly enough, during formal education, girls generally do better than boys do. In the UK this year, 58% of the applicants to full-time tertiary level education were girls. In the GCSE last year, among the girls to, uh, who took the GCSE, 25% of them scored an A or an A star, compared to 18% of the boys. And in research published this year by the American Psychological Association, looking at data taken from across the world over the last century, indicates that girls generally make higher grades than boys in their school years. So girls generally do better during formal education, but not afterwards. 
Formal education may not be necessarily providing girls with the real world skills that they need in order to excel in the world after college. In fact, all of these traits that they learn, how to be a good girl, these things may actually hurt them. Because education generally emphasizes good girl traits, and bad girls, those who are different, those who don't do as they're told, are weeded out or forced to conform. Those who are rewarded are those who've learned to be obedient. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit how this happens in dance training, which is what I'm most familiar with. Dance is touted as something that provides a lot of real-world skills for children. And I know this because I'm often required to trot out these real-world skills when I'm talking to mostly Asian parents who are very concerned about letting their children. So I would say, oh, but Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so dance provides all sorts of great life skills. For example, for younger children, dance will teach you spatial awareness, standing in line, taking turns, following directions, listening, talking when appropriate, dress code. And then for older students of dance, dance will teach you patience, hard work, organization, planning, prioritization, learning to work with a team, focus, commitment, time management skills, and these, needless to say, are all good girl traits. Choreographer Jessica Lange, who is on the faculty at American Ballet Theatre's school, says, in your average class of seven-year-olds, there are 30 little boys, little girls, and one little boy. And he's on scholarship, even though 15 of those little girls are more talented than he is. If you're one of those little girls, it doesn't take you long to figure out that you are replaceable. And the more obedient you are, the quieter you are, the better you'll do. The obedient are rewarded. So by the time these people get to be working adults, all of the creativity has been squashed out of them. And this is not specific to dance either. It's true in most education. So caveat, here at ISKL, you probably have the best education that money can buy anywhere in the world. But just because that's so doesn't mean you're always being encouraged to be the most creative person that you can be. Research in Creativity Research Journal indicates that teachers generally don't like creative students, or students who display the kind of behavior which is most often linked to creativity. When teachers are asked to identify traits that would identify someone as who is creative, they normally pick things like discipline. And this is true of parents as well as teachers. I mean, there's that old joke, you know, parents spend the first two years of your life teaching you how to walk and talk, and then the next 16 of your years of your life telling you to sit down and shut up. And it's true of both girls and boys, but non-conformity is much more tolerated in boys than in girls. Boys will be boys. Girls have to be good girls. So how do you change this? We can take some best practice examples from an organization called the, Days, uh, the Girls' Day School Trust in the UK, which is a group of elite private girls' schools, and their ethos our mission is of generations of women who have the ability to lead to make a difference to the world. One of the things they've tried to institute is improved risk-taking. Okay, so we all know that in order to become the next Mark Zuckerberg, you have to know how to take risks, you have to know how to fall down and pick yourself back up again. You know, there's probably a colorful poster on the wall of your career counselor's office that has clouds and rainbows on it that says something like, if you are unwilling to risk the unusual, you will have to settle for the ordinary. It's pop psychology. We've all heard this before, but there is a certain degree of truth to it. And it's especially relevant for girls. The principal of one of these days 
our Girls Day School Trust School, said, the girls are extremely confident with, the, with themselves in most scenarios. But I do think we need to improve girls' confidence when they are out of their comfort zones, such as during interviews. Recently, some of the girls entered into a debating competition with a group of boys. While the girls were very well prepared, they just didn't perform as comfortably as the boys, who came in totally unprepared, argued off the cuff, blew the audience away. Sound familiar? They've also tried to institute something called Failure Week to teach pupils how to deal with failure, how to be more resilient, how to learn from their mistakes. One of the things they've tried to do is to have tests where you can't, no matter what you do, get 100%. Oh no. But this is important for girls because, according to a study by the UK's Equality and Human Rights Commission, girls are particularly hampered by fears of failure. They've also tried to have something called Boasting week. Amid fears that girls may be missing out on opportunities later in life because they fail to put themselves forward in the same way as boys. The principal of Wimbledon High School said, Women in general are known for finding it harder to trumpet their achievements and accomplishments than men. Teenage girls are particularly prone to fearing being perceived as arrogant, immodest, boastful. Within the world of work, women find it hard to self-promote because they have this view that there'll be a backlash. But being seen as too confident or vain will actually make people dislike them. Men have been shown to get over that. They don't care if people don't like them because they want this job or this pay rise. And this translates into very real-world situations. So, for example, the gap in pay. According to Linda Babcock, who is an economics professor at Carnegie Mellon University, 46% of men going into a job will negotiate their salary, compared to only 30% of women. And this is quite similar to my own experience of working with emerging choreographers. When you have the women emerging choreographers, they always step back. They're very afraid to step forward. They say, oh, I can't choreograph yet. I need to learn some more. Well, the fact is, you learn by doing it. Yes, there are certain skills that you can have, but those skills are not really necessarily going to make you a good choreographer. And there are a lot of good choreographers, mostly men, who do not have any of those skills. So usually when I have an opportunity for choreography, the girls will say, oh, I'm not sure. And the boys will say, yeah, sure. I'll try that. I can do that. They have the same level of ability. But then when it comes to actually choreographing, the girls are more afraid to bend the rules because they don't have that much confidence. Because they have spent so much time and effort in their lives trying to obey those rules. Good girls may make good dancers, but bad girls make better choreographers. Because they're less afraid to be creative. So if you want to be a creative artist, or for that, that matter, if you want to be a woman leader, I think you have to be a bad girl. What do we do? How do we do this? I see a lot of parents out in the audience. So for the parents, the principal of Wimbledon High School has this. If there's one thing I would say to parents of young children, particularly girls, it would be try very, very hard not to constantly show strong approval of daughters doing lovely things to please you. Show approval when they throw off the fetters and perhaps do something a little bit naughty. And for girls, this means disobedience. And I don't mean the usual kind of disobedience, oh, I'm not going to come home at 12 o'clock at night because you tell me to. But I mean it in the sense of civil disobedience. Setting yourself up in defense of a belief. It does mean being a little bit more. But Thoreau said, disobedience is the true foundation of, limit of liberty. The obedient are slaves. 
from my admittedly quite limited experience of being a woman leader, to the good girls I would say this. First of all, leaders take a position. That's what being a leader means. But you don't have to take a position in a vacuum. Surround yourself with people you respect, who respect you, get lots of advice, and then make your decision. Do what you want to do. Secondly, you can't please everyone. This may seem obvious, but it's a very, very difficult thing for a good girl to understand. It's particularly difficult because you've spent so much time in your life trying to please people in positions of authority. You can't please everyone. You will piss people off. Some people will not be okay with what you do. They ne never talk to you again, and that's okay. That's it. Think about it. And then, go and have some fun. Because after all, being in a position of leadership or of creativity should be fun. Saving the world, making a difference, it should be fulfilling. It should be satisfying. So take some time, all the good girls out there. Think about it. And then, get on down with your bad self. <laughs>